my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and today we're going to do a video about, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, pistons, a conrod stretching, pistons climbing high up the ball. Let's just get one thing straight, a lot of people are saying, I think that guy meant millimetres, not microns. I did say it was a badly, it was, you know, the point he was trying to get was badly worded. But I don't know where you've guessed millimetres from. I'm, I'm not defending the guy, what I'm just saying is... Is all right. You think he means millimeters, but there was nothing I saw in there that says how much it is. His wording was bad, and he didn't get the point across very well. But yeah, making the jump of I think the guy you're now predicting what this guy thought. I, I don't know either way. I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm going to say <laughs> where did you get that from? I don't know. Talking about fucking getting the point across, it was really quite funny, and we all should laugh. And what I'd love you to do is everyone to put a thumbs down on this video this video right now put a thumbs down fuck it i deserve it um <laughs> i then start the video saying this guy didn't really explain things very well and then i just did exactly the same thing the guy is not wrong <laughs> this is the thing loads of people jumped on the bandwagon saying this guy's talking shite he isn't entirely wrong it's just badly worded so what we're talking about was um what a lot of people had a problem with and rightly so but it's because I didn't fucking get the point across properly. Was. Um, people are saying acceleration has nothing to do with it. So if you look at the acceleration graph of a piston. Right. Let's just say it looks something like this. Oh yeah, first time. And let's just say that this is 11, this is 11,000, this is 12,000 K, and this is 30, 13,000 you top out. These are the acceleration curves for a, um, and that this is degrees across the bottom. Um, so zero would be there, 180 would be there, and 360 would be there, because we've got to put our units across the bottom nowadays, because people go mental, which is fine. <laughs> when you look at this, when you go for rapid accelerations, let's just say you accelerate rapidly from 1, 000, uh, 11,000 to 13,000. Your piston velocities will basically just creep across here, up to the higher level, or back down, or up it, or whatever. That's all they'll do. The fastest acceleration forces you are going to get is from 13,000 RPM. Yes, I get that. But what you're doing is, is, or what I failed to get across to people, because I'm an idiot, is that, like I say, the bit at the beginning about um, uh, oil pressure and... Um, the fact that your bearings, whew, everything's coming to me at once. Right, so in the beginning of the video, I was saying about stuff like the way that your conrod and all the it's not just stretch, it's the fact that everything can move up. Basically, the whole thing is going like this, right? The whole thing, all the clearances get tighter because this has been thrust up like this, and it's the crankshaft that basically stops this from happening. The crankshaft will not sit in the top of the roof of its bearings, but it will basically squish the oil. So you could say, there's your oil with your bearings in it, there's your, your bore, your main journal bore like this. And then when it gets thrust up like this, your crank pin goes up higher, the pressure increases here, you know, your oil pressure, so on and so forth. The problem is, is when you accelerate really fast, there's a, there's a lag to this system. There is an oil feed here into your main bearings, and just say we have our crank pin here, and the piston is on its way up. So the force applied there is everything's th thrusting up like so. And just so you get to top dead centre, it really pulls it up. So this crankshaft moves up. And you've got a pump over here. You, oh, I can't fucking do these. You've got a pump here like this. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, fucking hell, it's not bad, is it? It's not bad, until I step back and had a look at it. <laughs> that's going to do that, and that's going to do that. There we go. You've got a pump here, and there's a lag between this system from here to here. So when you accelerate, you've got to remember these systems are draw-through. So basically, this, this has to draw up the fluid uh, into your pump. And when you do stuff like this, basically what happens is when you basically just get immediately on the taps... Your oil pressure, there's test results that show the oil pressure will drop 
and when your oil pressure drops just so this is normal operation this oil becomes under high pressure here and it squidges out like this um, but that's basically the more force you apply to it the higher the pressure becomes however the problem is is there's an outlet here this this section of your bearing will piss out more oil because not only that you're pushing on this side increasing the pressure this is low pressure and a wider gap so more oil just flows out of it so any oil that comes through just tends to just basically push the rest of it out of it as it goes so you're, when you get on the oil when you get on the taps your oil pressure automatically drops now if you go really on the taps what happens is is that there's so little the pressure in the oil it's not just pressure it's the volume of oil the feed of oil your crankshaft goes even higher basically and that's what i was talking about and the fact of the matter is is that now that you're accelerating these masses um when you add all the all these accelerations with your crankshaft moving into that the accelerations are a tiny bit higher it's fuck all and we're talking about nuances here we're talking about this is at the extreme high end but basically when you just get on the tap that oil pressure falls but not only that as you really open up you know this really opens up like this and a lot of oil can flow through here and any oil being fed tends to because the you know let's just say the pressure's 60 psi you can go up to like just say 100 it can go in a bit higher but you know let's just say it's 100 psi the forces that are applied to this are no match for that it just <laughs> fuck off so the oil just basically squirts through here and it because there's this low pressure region it really does squirt there so when you get on the taps if you gradually increase the, if you gradually accelerate the oil pump this lag because of the distance between the two these aren't as high you're not basically putting as much load on the oil system so it can keep up but if you get on it on the taps really quickly like literally just go bang and go full acceleration you know this is kind of what can happen um, this is why they change bearing shells in drag racing they can run with those bearing shells they're probably going to explode at some point but because they've hammered down them bearing shells and that bearing's got thinner let's draw that out we spoke to the cannon guys at santa pod and they were just every time they were swapping out bearing shells the reason why is because now there's your original bearing shell this bearing shell has now been squashed out like this which means that this is missing which means that that's a wider gap which means your oil pressures drop and that's what i'm saying about them hammering on so yes when you look at the graphs from a static point of view it looks like well matt you're talking rubbish because the maximum forces you can ever go is as the maximum force the 13,000 rpm something like that but the fact of the matter is, is this is a dynamic system that has multiple things that are involved and if that crankshaft can push that oil out of the way and the thing is the oil is just bypassing and pissing out you keep on going there's a lag in the system and the system has to catch up when everything else is then turning that speed now you might think to yourself well the crankshaft is spinning this you know it's geared to the pump but there's that distance and not only that is we are using um a siphon tube and when you start to stretch polymers like that they don't basically how do i explain this without going through oil pumps and viscosities the demand from the engine can be instant you can just get on the taps and all of a sudden she's going and the oil pumps right let's go you know what i mean and trying to stretch that oil out and basically draw that through um there is a lag there there's a latency so this is happening right now and this is happening over here and by the time you get it it's like turbo lag it's a bit different because it's compressible fluid incompressible and compressible fluids it's a bit like turbo lag if you think think about it like that and in these extreme cases and that's why i was talking about rod stretch and stuff like that with extreme acceleration this is kind of what can happen now you know if you just rag the shit out of your engine it's the acceleration it's just getting on that acceleration everything just takes time to catch up with it hope that makes sense if guys still don't get it i'll have to think of another way of basically trying to show you it hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit